This is EE 2070, week one, lecture three. So today we are getting started with our course actually, which is, we're gonna start with series resonance, resonance, which is section 14.5 in your book. And basically the concept of resonance or the definition, if you will, of resonance is, so it's defined as the frequency, and by frequency we usually mean in terms of omega, at which the impedance of the circuit is purely real, okay? And again, we'll start this our discussion of resonance with the series resonance circuit, which is section 14.5, like I mentioned. So let's look at series resonance by considering the series RLC circuit. So here is R, L, and C. So recall that the input is going to be a sinusoid. Okay, so I'm going to write it in the phasor form, Vm theta V, okay, and I'm going to switch these to impedances. So let's call this, let's use J omega L and 1 over J omega C. So I want you to recall the formula or the expression, I'm going to use the word formula, for complex power S bar as VRMS IRMS conjugate and we will use these uh, shortly in the sense so uh, again we'll use this shortly well let me just write this out as P plus JQ okay where P is the average power uh, P this is average power, so let me just write this out as one half V max I max cosine of theta V minus theta I, and the units of average power is watts, okay, and Q, which is one half V max I max sine of theta V. Uh, minus theta i and this is the reactive power and the unit is volt amps reactive and s is complex power so s is defined as complex power with the unit of volt amps okay And the power factor is cosine of theta V minus theta I. And looks like my tablet is about to crash. So let me pause the lecture and I'll be right back. Okay, continuing. So like we were just discussing all the, or recalling the various power quantity measurements. And I made only one error, just as I'm looking through. This should be, I mean, S without the bar is apparent power. It's the magnitude of complex power. So let's just, uh, let me just fix that. So anyway, let's apply the definition of resonance to our circuit. That is, the impedance of our circuit should be purely real. So what is the impedance of our circuit? It's simply R plus J omega L plus one over J omega C. I can write this as R plus J omega L minus one over omega C. So Z bar at omega equals omega naught. So this is our resonance frequency is, whoops. R, oh sorry, it's the definition is R. This implies that omega naught L should be equal to one over omega naught C. 
the ingredients is, if the ingredients is purely real, these two should cancel each other, and they will at this frequency. Okay. So here is the expression for resonant frequency in radians per second. So what are the implications of this? Well, there are quite a few, right? So let's look at the current phaser is simply the voltage phaser. Uh, so now the current phaser is simply the voltage phaser divided by the impedance. This implies the current phaser is simply V bar divided by R plus J omega L minus 1 over omega C. Therefore, so therefore one implies that at omega equals omega naught, first point the impedance so the magnitude very specific the magnitude of the impedance is minimum and it's equal to r okay so what is the magnitude of z is simply square root of r squared plus omega L minus ono omega C squared. So obviously, oops, if this is zero, then the magnitude of impedance is minimum and it's equal to R. Okay. We also get, therefore, the current is maximum. Okay. Also, uh, since the impedance is purely resistive, the magnitude of the current is maximum. Also, since the impedance is purely resistive, this implies that point number three, power factor is unity. Okay? Also note, so what is the voltage across the inductor at resonance? is simply the current through the circuit times the impedance of the inductor, which is J omega L, this is going to be V uh, bar over R times J omega L. But notice that since So, well, this V bar over R times J omega L and the voltage across the capacitor at omega, and this should be omega naught, omega equals omega. And well, let's just simplify this, right? So, that's what I was going to do. Sorry, I was not struggling, just thinking a little bit. So, it's going to be, actually, let's just leave it as omega naught. And VC. at omega equals omega naught is simply I bar over J omega C, which is simply negative V bar over R. So it's negative because you multiply under J V bar over R. <coughs> Sorry or omega C, and again, this is omega naught, okay? However, one, so this is the values, one again, yep. So, what we can do now is the 
let's call this 2 and 3. But 2 implies that VL at omega equals omega naught is now, let's plug in omega naught, is 1 over square root of LC times L, right? It's that. Then you get J V bar over R. So if you multiply and divide by square root of L, you get that. However, and 3 implies, watch, Vc bar, is omega equal and omega equals omega naught is minus j v bar over r omega naught is one over square root of l c times c so if you multiply and divide by so this is simply minus g v bar square root of LC over C. So this is what I meant. So this is equal to minus JV bar over R. If you multiply and divide by square root of C, you will get square root of LC. So what I want you to understand or remember, if you will, uh, box these because these are very important. So, in other words, obviously, four plus five equals zero, <coughs> and I'll just put the zero plus j zero. So it implies you're looking at complex addition. But the bottom line is, and this makes sense. That's the bottom line. Since what the heck I can't spell since all the voltage is dissipated across the resistor. In other words, the impedance of the circuit is purely resistive <coughs> or the series combination of the uh, capacitor and the inductor is acting like a short circuit. You will see uh, the dual case that is parallel resonance, the parallel combination of the capa of the capacitor and the inductor will act like an open circuit when the input is a current source. But anyway, so what we have is you have the voltage across the inductor and the voltage across the capacitor as being 180 degrees out of phase. Again, uh, we're talking about series resonance when the when we have an input sinusoidal voltage. So when you have two sinusoids that are 180 degrees out of phase and you add them, they do cancel each other. Okay. Uh, so let's see. What we can do is we can define a couple of more quantities. So for that, let's look at power. Note that, note, so if you consider power okay, at resonance, so that's what we'll discuss, uh, but anyway, let's just write out the general expression for average power, which is, uh-oh, so my thing's going to crash again, let me pause the lecture. Okay, continuing, so I was going to say before I lose anything and I didn't, so the average power is VRMS IRMS. So let me just write it out. So it's VRMS IRMS. So this is power. Uh, let me cosine of theta V minus theta I. So, nah. Average power. This implies. Uh, at omega equals omega naught, so at resonance, average power at resonance is VRMS IRMS, which is V max over square root of 2, I max over square root of 2, so it's one half V max, I max, but since it's purely resistive, it's uh, 
V equals IR. So in other words, you basically get I squared times R, which is equal to one half I is V over R. So it's V max squared over R. Now, so in other words, ah, maximum power dissipated occurs at resonance uh, so uh, now let's define two frequencies which are the half power frequencies so power at omega equals one omega one is defined as one half Uh, P resonance, so this turns out there's another frequency, and we'll compute that. It's pretty easy to do. It's also defined as one half the maximum average power, therefore, um, P at omega equals omega 1, which is P at omega equals omega 2, one quarter V max squared over R. Uh, so let's see. Actually, let's do this. One quarter I squared R, but I squared is V max squared over R squared times so let's do this. V max over Z squared, which is one half We go back to R squared. Now you'll see what I'm trying to do. Square root of 2 there. Square times R. Therefore, to solve, so I'm going to use hence because I already used therefore. Hence, to solve for omega 1, omega 2, set z, which is the impedance, or the magnitude of the impedance, to square root of 2r. Therefore, you get square root of r squared plus omega l minus 1 over omega c. The whole squared is square root of 2r. Okay, And if you simply do the math, Anyway, omega is omega 1, omega 2. So you will get omega 1 is minus r over 2l uh, plus square root of r over 2l, the whole squared plus 1 over lc. And omega 2, so by we are assuming, oh god, don't tell me it's crashing again. Let me pass the lecture again. So continuing, we assumed omega 1 is less than omega 2. So this is going to be uh, r over 2l plus square root of r over 2l, the whole squared, plus 1 over lc. Okay. Thus, our resonance frequency, omega naught, <coughs> you can easily show. This is the geometric mean of the two half power frequencies. And it's very easy to do because you this is, look at this is A minus B times A plus B, which is A squared minus B squared. So the R over 2L, the whole squared, will definitely cancel these two. You'll get square no sort of LC. Okay. And it's also easy to determine. Uh, so there are a couple of other quantities that we'll define. One is what is called as the bandwidth is defined as omega 2 minus omega 1. And this is only one of the several definitions of bandwidth that are used. And this should strictly be called the half power bandwidth, but we'll go with bandwidth. Okay. So in other words, this is what is called as the width 
of the resonance curve and we'll talk about resonance curve in the next lecture because we're running out of time in the sense in the online video I want it to be a maximum of 20 minutes okay well I say maximum of 20 minutes but well, it's only over 20 minutes so it'll be between 20 and 22 minutes so just bear with me and then the Q which is defined as 2 pi times peak energy stored in circuit divided by energy dissipated by the circuit in one period at resonance. So the peak energy stored in the circuit, if you use the in energy associated with the inductor, it's one half L I squared. The energy dissipated by the circuit in one period it's one half i squared times r but it's one period so it's one over f naught and now you can see so in other words this gives you an idea of the sharpness of the resonance curve again we'll look at <clears throat> what do you mean by sharpness with resonance curve in the next lecture so these cancel. <coughs> Sorry. So this will become omega naught L over R, and an equivalent expression, which is not used that much, is omega naught. So this is equal. So this implies the Q is equal to omega naught L over R, or one over omega naught R C. I can try to box many of the important ideas. There's a whole bunch of them. Box this important one. Note that this Q should not be confused with the Q volt amp reactive Q. <coughs> and what we are talking about, whether the Q or the quality factor or the power, the volt amps reactive Q, what we're talking about will be clear from context. But the Q is dimensionless obviously because the units of this is seconds L over R is the time constant if you think about RL circuit so the unit is 1 over seconds okay um, what am I saying omega naught Arr, I just reversed it the unit of omega naught is 1 over second L over R is second so dimensionless same thing here okay uh, note that uh, now bandwidth which is omega 2 minus omega 1 which will become L R over L okay therefore bandwidth is R over L which is omega naught over Q okay. again all these expressions are valid for a series resonance circuit and in the next lecture when we conclude the series resonance circuit we will see what do you mean by this sharpness and resonance curve etc <coughs> but a hint here is as you make R smaller and smaller this cube goes higher and higher and in the limit it goes to infinity so we'll see what the implications of all this are in the next lecture see you then